Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting lotus flowers. This was requested by Jai Ganesh. I have to say it's probably not the easiest flower to paint as it does have a few layers but I'll try to break it down so like usual I'm just going to draw it out first. Firstly, what you always want to keep in mind is the fact that the flower petals grow in layers and it always creates a natural round silhouette. So even when I'm adding on layers and layers of petals, I want to make sure that the overall silhouette of the flower is round. This is probably the most basic and important thing to keep in mind. The layers of the flower petals depend on how mature the flower is. It is harder with more layers as you do have to visualize it, which is why it's always easier to draw it out first. And when you're layering the petals, you can just draw right on top of the previous one. So you don't necessarily have to think about the formation as much. As you can see, as an example, I just overlaid some petals right on top. I'm just going to repeat another one now without the circle or oval as a guide. Another point to study before painting or drawing is also how the petals will be shaped when they're rotated or facing different directions. So here as an example, this is probably a good start to the shape of the flower if you don't want to add too many layers. But from here, then you can start to add more by overlaying more petal shapes once you're a bit more comfortable with those individual petal shapes. You can also practice by imagining different angles or viewpoints of the petals and sketching it out prior to putting it together as a flower and using those shapes as a library of reference when you're compiling it together if that's easier for you. I'm just going to put a few examples of what the foreshortened folds will look like and this is probably the most confusing part of the flower when it comes to drawing these. You can also go to Google to search for these flowers and study how they grow and of course the shapes of the petals to use as reference. This is what I did or what I generally do before compiling a tutorial or a painting. Then I just try to break it down into simpler shapes so it's a bit easier to approach. As for the leaves, if you're looking at it from bird's eye view or from the top, they're circular in shape and the sides are usually a little bit frilly, so I like to just draw a round circle then using that as a guide to create the wavy outline. These leaves go down at the center and the veins grow outwards, which makes the leaf section look like pizza slices or citrus slices, and it's always a good idea to get acquainted with the simplest viewpoint before tackling different angles. So flat circles when viewed from different angles will become ovals. Depending on which viewpoint or angle you're looking at it from, the oval might become thinner or thicker. So something that I like to do is to imagine different angles while still simplifying the shapes and then adding the stems at the center of the circle or ovals. And once this is something that's comfortable enough for you to do, I add the additional details of the leaves, such as the frills along the side and the center where it touches the stem to come down slightly. So when you're looking at the stem from a lower viewpoint, you can see that the center will have a slight tip which comes down to the stem. Let's just draw another one here and notice that the lines of the veins also follow the curvature of the shape so it stays nice and flowy and organic. Next I'm going to go over the budding flowers and for this it's really simple. I just draw it like a teardrop shape with smaller ones at the bottom as the new petals form. And then I just follow this up with the stems of the flowers. Do this as much as you would like to as practice and you can then start to play with the composition. As I'm drawing out the composition, I like to simplify the shapes as before. So the main flower, depending on how many you want to paint, I just indicate it with a round shape. Then I create ovals or circles in different angles for the leaves and the teardrop shape for the buds. Keeping the shape simple will help you get quick sketches down, especially when trying out different compositions. Once I see that I like a certain composition, and I'm just going to use this one as an example, then I'm just going to add certain details like the actual flower and then the frills of the leaves just to make sure that I actually like this composition before moving on to either painting and using this composition as reference or 
For me, I drew out the outline first before painting so it's a bit easier for me to visualize and just color in without thinking about the layers. And then I loosely add more details with just the paint as loose flowers and leaves. It's really up to you how you would like to use these drawing methods but just find something that you're comfortable working with. I'm going to be painting with my Holbein paints for this one and I started with a light outline of a composition that I like then I just colored it in from there I started with the colors vermilion and quin rose as the main hue for the flower then on the side I added a little bit of white to create a lighter tone of pink because I want to create a light pastel while creating a nice gradient from the tip of the petals downwards. To create the gradient, I like to paint one petal at a time. I do this by first wetting one area of the petal with either just clean water, but my brush was still a little bit tinted from the pink color and that's fine as long as it's really light. Then I like to add on the darker pinks at the tip of the petal while the surface is still fairly damp so it blends nicely downwards. Just keep adding uh, darker pinks whenever you're comfortable. If you would like to create more contrasted gradient, you can always use a thicker consistency of just the vermilion and the quin rose. Depending on how your paint or your paper reacts to what on what technique, you can always use your brush to move the paint around on the wet surface to create a softer gradient. And whenever your brush is picking up too much paint or creating a puddle, just dab it on tissue to absorb the excess moisture, then go back to blending afterwards. Some petals might have two sections if there's a bit of foreshortening in the composition. So for those cases, I always make sure that I paint them separately so the colors doesn't just blend together but instead have clear defined sections. For some cases, I would like the inside of the petals to be darker than the center as the petals are closer together but for ones which are more open, I tend to paint the inside a bit lighter than the outer petals, but this is of course up to you and it also depends on your light source. To define the petals further, I also like to repaint the edges as those parts are usually the darkest pinks, so that can also help separate the front face and the inside of the petals. For the older petals which are facing downwards, I'm going to add a bit of yellow or yellow green to where the petals are connecting together. For this, I'm using Hansa Yellow and Permanent Green 2 in a very thin consistency. The ratio is really up to you though whether you would like to make it a bit more yellow or a little bit more green. So here my brush was still a little bit dirty from the pink which is why the color is more of a flesh tone but that's okay because the yellow and green pigment is already included. I used a very thin consistency of this to wet the area as before and when I add the previous pinks at the tip you can see now that the gradient is still slightly different from the previous one even though the change is very subtle because of that yellow and green. For the bottom ones, I'm going to incorporate more yellow and green and then I'm going to gradate it to the pink as before. So now you can see that the color is going from light yellow green to the yellowish flesh tone to light pink and then the darker pink. Thank you. 
As a finishing touch to the flower, I use a mixture of Hansa Yellow with the permanent green number 2 and add it to the previous pink mixture. This is going to create a very muted and murky pink color which I'm going to use as shadow color to separate the petals. You can use this to outline lightly around all of the petals but I'm just going to add this in certain areas only around the corners of each petals especially when they're touching each other and might look a little bit like a bulky silhouette. Wet. Then once I'm done adding the shadows near the corners, you can see that the lines are a bit harsh so I'm going to use a clean damp brush to reactivate and soften some of those shadow colors. One more final touch up for the flower depending on how open your flowers are but for this I'm going to add some orange stamens at the center using a thick mixture of Hansa Yellow and Vermilion. I think I'm done with the flower part, so I'm just going to add the stem by using a mixture of Hansa Yellow and Permanent Green and line on one of the side of the stem with a high ratio green so the stem doesn't look completely flat. Moving on to the flower buds, I'm going to use the same method as how I painted the flower petals. But as I get towards the outer petals, the smaller ones, I'm going to use the green mixture instead and define some of the lines by using a higher ratio green with Hansa Yellow. For the next flower bud, because the budding flower is even younger and smaller, I'm going to paint this one using just the green mixture. So now you can see different growth stages of the flowers and you can incorporate it however you want in your own composition. At the back here, I have the exposed center of the flower. This happens when the flower gets too old and the petals fall off so only the center is visible and this I'm going to use the green color again and I'm going to create a soft upside down cone shape by adding a darker green along the side as well as redefining the stem like I did with the previous flowers. Next I'm going to be painting the leaves. For this I'm going to be using five colors. You see me using four here which are viridian, ultramarine blue, Hansa yellow, and permanent green number two, which I started with, but I'm also going to add burnt umber later on to mute the green slightly. This is where we can have a bit more fun with color mixing. The leaves of the lotus flowers are fairly deep in color, so each of the colors I mentioned play a role, and it's up to you how you want to mix and change up the ratio according to your own compositions. Viridian is a bright and vibrant dark green color, which you can deepen further with the ultramarine blue. Then we have the Hansa Yellow and Permanent Green number 2, which I've been using to create the nice light green. With these mixtures, you can then combine them together to create a mid-tone green. However, at the moment, the colors are a little bit too vibrant for my liking, which is why I'm going to add some burnt umber to mute the green slightly and this way you can also play with a little bit of muted colors as well as vibrant colors. I'm painting the leaves fairly loosely in comparison to the flowers because I want that one main flower to be the focal point and I also enjoy seeing the textures of the leaves from the loose approach. I try to also leave out some white negative spaces as well as add darker tones in order to create a sense of depth. For the veins of the leaves, I try to vary the curves depending on where they're facing. This is to create more form for the leaves and it also helps create more of a flowy light feel instead of it looking heavy and stiff. I mentioned this in one of my older videos before, but by adding more curves into things like stems or veins, it will create more of an organic and natural feel to the painting. Basically, I try to follow the curvature of the veins when I'm painting this, so I try to paint it loosely per section while leaving out some white negative space in areas of the veins, or for the white space to follow the movement of the leaves. Then I add the darker tone of green to add along the veins as well so there's white space as well as the darker greens to accentuate the form of the leaves. Notice that I try to also change up the temperature of the green slightly. Bluish green, 
by adding more ultramarine will help deepen the color and that way it can act more as shadow color to the leaves whereas lighter greens from the mixture of pansy yellow and permanent green number two is much brighter and pops up a little bit more. This is where I start to add burnt umber into the mix and notice that the colors look a little bit more natural this way but I also like to switch it up at times. I think this also comes down to taste. I personally like muted natural colors but if you prefer the brighter and more vibrant type of colors you can also omit the burnt umber. As I'm painting this, I'm just visualizing which parts will be in shadow or in light and I try to also separate the colors so the leaves all look separated at the same time. The bottom of the leaves are mostly darker as the light source is from the top but feel free to play around with this and get more acquainted with color mixing and color composition. It's not the easiest thing, I also still struggle sometimes to find good swatches but I find it really fun to experiment with. When and if you're unsure about the colors, I always like to start light and then slowly layering and building up on the colors. This will also create richer colors as you layer and switch up the tone of green slightly. So I'm just going to keep painting the rest of the leaves and I'll get back to you when I'm ready to move on to the next step. After I finish painting the last leaf, I'm then going to add some loose elements for the leaves and the flowers as well. I'm just going to paint them without drawing them first and I don't want this to be too detailed but just to fill in certain areas to make it a bit more dense. If you're uncomfortable doing this, of course you may also draw them out fully first but I find that drawing too many leaves at the beginning will overcomplicate the painting which is why I chose this route. Or you can also draw it out like I did before and before adding the additional loose details you can draw it out before filling it in. So that might be a bit easier for you to paint without confusing yourself with too many outlines. At the bottom parts I tend to paint the leaves using the darker greens whereas at the top I use the light green mixture just to make the bottom look more dense and heavy in contrast to the light feel at the top. Thank you. 
At this point, I'm just filling the spaces to adjust the composition. This also creates somewhat of a background to the painting because those elements will look like it's less focused in comparison to the foreground or the main painting that I did. By doing this, you will start to see more depth in the composition. And here is also where I start to adjust the contrast and values as well as to bring out certain objects or to push them towards the back. Since the lotus flowers have nice long stems, I try to redefine some of the stems by adding a darker tone from the bottom or close to the flowers or the buds. This is to separate the thin stems with the rest of the leaves or other elements which are in the background. This also helps create more of a delicate feel as well as nice movements to the painting. And since this sort of falls into the final steps. I always try to look at the painting as a whole and not as individual elements anymore and this will bring everything together. I know when I was pretty new to drawing, painting or art in general, I always get caught up with getting one element so perfect so everything might look a little bit detached in the end because I'm not looking at it as a whole so I think something like trying to unify the whole composition is something that is great to get used to. Here like usual, I'm just going to add dots around the painting to loosen it up more and also add a little bit more dynamic. With watercolors, the paint tend to fade when it dries, so finishing too early can also result in an unfinished look, which is why I always wait for the paint to dry and see the condition of your painting, whether you would need to add on more depth. So here after everything completely dries and the paint settles, I'm going to go in with one final layer to add little touch-ups on some of the leaves, especially when the value looks a little bit too close to each other. I tend to add darker tones to parts of the leaves to separate them. Then lastly, I used my small brush to add a light tone of pink to create very thin delicate lines for the petals as extra subtle details and that's pretty much it. So this is the finished painting. I know that this is more of a looser approach compared to my other tutorials, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it and learned something new from this video. Like usual, all of the tools and links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!